I think the most important thing to realize is when we got something we're working on, when we're excited about something, when something's new, when something's complicated, we tend to lean in. And when you le le lean in, you kind of forget the bigger picture. So the first thing I would say is just take a step back. Have a look at everything that's going on. What are the regulations? What are the frameworks? What's the industry? What are the other things that you need to consider? And who do you need to have those conversations with? And who do you need to bring to the table so you can make better decisions more effectively? And I think if everyone just took a step back and just asked those questions, then we'd get much more powerful results. We'd get those things right first time. And AI by design, privacy by design, all of those elements would pretty much take care of themselves better than if we just lean in and forget to have those conversations until it's too late or it's going to be too expensive to make any changes. Jeff, what do you think? What, what, do, we, what do you want people to walk away with? Well, yeah, I think actually maybe this last point that I just brought up, right, is is try to understand what your models are actually doing. Uh, the more you understand what your models are doing, the more easily you're going to fit within any kind of framework and the more easily you're going to be able to um, to provide that level of governance around it. And I think that's the that's the point I'd like to to leave with everyone. Um, if you can't understand your models, you're going to have a hard time really doing anything with your data governance. Okay. So Neil, what do you, what do you want people to walk away with? I think just starting with a use case registry for your uh, AI use case is always a place everyone starts and then doing a risk assessment. Something we have seen though is people think about AI use cases as just Gen AI, but you've got a lot of commercial off-the-shelf apps that also have AI. And now all of a sudden, you become a deployer under the EU AI Act because you're deploying those apps that might have embedded AI. So just take a more broader view of your AI use cases and not just your AI, Gen AI use cases. I love it. I love it. Michael? Um, go a different direction. I think, I think that there's a uh, tension between capability and security with all of these, with all of the use cases, with all of the capabilities. Um, and as a panel, we talk a, a bunch about governance and leadership, et cetera. And the, the way that AI typically starts in large organizations is very skunk works, kind of a team here, a team there. Um, and if we're going to manage the tension between capability and security, some centralization needs to occur. Leadership needs to occur kind of not just bottom up, but top down also. And I'm going to add, if the one take home I want on this is I, I'm, I'm going to date myself. When the internet sort of came out and people wanted to use the internet for the first time, it was like, well, it's not safe. And, and companies that could take advantage of it actually had a huge competitive advantage. And there's some that didn't, and some of those companies are not around. But it was technical. It was scary. It was confusing all these different components. We've been here before. Um, yes, it's a new technology, but we know how to do that. And these days, you know, if you have web, web enabled application, most companies have a very repeatable process. You know, let's look at this and, and some, some have, have require more, more diligence than others to be able to do that. I think when we look at generative AI, it's the same thing. We got to get all the stakeholders of the room, figure out how we're going to be able to use it, develop policies and processes, but then make it repeatable because we're going to be able to do that. And let's focus on the first one, but let's not get so overwhelmed that this is, oh, completely new. We know what's going to happen because we've been, you know, Part of good governance is knowing how to work with uncertainty and work with risk and, and pull these in, but still get a product that is, you know, compliant and secure and safe, but still usable. And so let's draw back on the lessons on the past, right? And then I have one final lesson question for our panelists. We've talked about all the things that we want to do. What's the one mistake that you want, you know, if you could, if you could broadcast the world, be careful about doing this. Um, the one pitfall or, or something you can have organizations to be able to do. I'm going to go the same order. Jamal, what's, what's the one pitfall? What's the one thing to be careful about or avoid doing? I think the one place people make most mistakes is assuming that just because you're deploying an AI solution, you have less obligations or there's nothing for you to think about. It's not just for developers. It's also for people deploying those solutions as well. So I would say if you're deploying, make sure you still carry out your AI risk assessments. Okay. Jeff, what do you think? What's the one, if you could preach? I guess, I guess this, we could preach. Preach. What, 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 what would you preach to avoid the mistake? Uh, sorry, my mind just blanked on me. Um, skip me for a sec. I'll go to Sunil. Sunil, what's the one lesson or what, what's the one thing to avoid? I agree with Jamal. I think uh, when he talks about deploying AI, he call it shadow AI. So you have AI that's not 
out there in the lights, it's in the shadows, and you're deploying AI that might be embedded in other applications, and they still are subject to AI risk assessments. Okay, I like that. Michael, what do you think? I think uh, organizations need to very carefully evaluate the data that goes into the models, the, the data that the models are vacuuming up and, and who has access to them, where that data resides, how it can be used by adversaries. Okay. And then Jeff, back to you, what do you think? What's the one thing you want to caution people or, or, or help them avoid? You know, I think overall that AI has a lot of potential. Um, as you sort of stated, um, I wouldn't be scared of deploying AI, but when you're deploying it, I think you need to make sure that you understand what it is you want to accomplish. And the data that you're imbibing outside of your foundational model, especially if you're, you're, you're imbibing, um, you know, custom data sets, make sure that the accuracy of that is very high and that you understand what it is that that model is, you know, going to output. Um, because that's really going to be very telling in terms of how successful you're going to be with. So a, basically to, to, to be careful what you, you know, careful what you take in, cause that's going to come out. I like what everybody said. I guess the thing I add to that, and I'm going to go back to a lesson that my, when, when I first started work as a software development engineer, many, many, long, or just, just say a long time ago, my first boss had really good advice. He said, the biggest mistakes in projects are usually made in the first five minutes. Um, sometimes when we, and, and, and we don't want to make this a torturous process. We don't want to stop what we're doing, but sometimes just before we jump into something, are we, are we engaging the right people? Are we doing the right thing? Are we asking what we're doing? That five minute pause, you know, that five minute pause to, before we jump in and do something. Um, if you do the root analysis, the biggest mistakes, again, I, I'm, I'm going to argue that most of them happened in the first five minutes of the conception of a project. And that's, that's, uh, if you, if you're mindful about that, I think you can be much smarter for that. Mm -hmm.